have had incidents here in the past, but um, this is the worst by far. A chaotic scene at a nightclub in Cincinnati, Ohio. A gunman opening fire inside of a nightclub. And a car collides with a building on Chicago's west side, leaving two people dead. And police searching for the person who shot and killed a 14-year-old boy in the Austin neighborhood. Good morning to everyone. I'm Sean Lewis. And I'm Courtney Hall. It's Sunday, March 26th. Before we get to our top stories, though, let's check in with Mike Cameron. Hey, okay, Mike. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Sean. Good morning. A cloudy, rainy, foggy start to this Sunday here in Chicago. As you can see from our weather bug camera from Des Plaines, some fog there. A fog not quite as bad uh, across some of the southern suburbs in Romeoville. Still some rain down in that direction. The worst of the fog right now is over the west and north. Northwest suburbs where visibility is down under a mile. O'Hare right now at a mile visibility, not causing any problems as far as flights getting in and out yet. And here's where the rain is, encompasses much of the area. The heaviest rain is over northwest Indiana. One slug of uh, moisture moving north of, uh, well, Chesterton and Valparaiso, another one moving in from the south. Looks like uh, we'll see a Showers continue for much of the morning, and then some of the areas will begin to dry out later on this afternoon. 50 degrees, light east wind. That's going to turn southwest and warm us up later on. Still 42 in Waukegan, but up to 52 in Midway, 56 in Kankakee, and 52 degrees right now in Valparaiso. So we're already warmer than we were at any point yesterday. So we're moving in the right direction there. 60 degrees or 60 to 62 for a high later on, and I think some dry hours this afternoon. We'll talk more about that. Have the full forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, let's get a check on traffic with a man. Amanda in the traffic center. Good morning, Amanda. And thank you, Mike. Good Sunday morning, everyone. So again, the weather, city, suburbs, you're going to be dealing with some fog, some low visibility, and the wet pavement. A live look downtown Chicago on Michigan Avenue. This is actually an improvement a little while ago. Pretty foggy, so it looks like it's beginning to lift downtown. But this is a look out near Oak Brook, 290, 294, near the scene of a deadly overnight crash that occurred eastbound along I-88 at York Road. Five hours later, all traffic is now able to get by at at York Road for most of the morning. Eastbound I-88 traffic was being forced off onto the southbound Tri-State. So some good news. But again, uh, even if you are going to be just traveling a short distance, give yourself a little extra time this Sunday morning. And then, as you heard at the top of the newscast in Chicago's East Garfield Park neighborhood, a deadly pin and crash still being investigated at Fulton and Tallman, an SUV slamming into a building there. So crews will be on scene throughout the morning. And something to keep in mind with the rain, a lot of people may opt for public transit. So until 7 o'clock tonight, Blue Line trains are going to operate on the same track from California to Division. Just could cause some minor boarding delays, but again, just something to keep in mind. I'm Amanda Cernecki in the WGN Traffic Center. We continue to follow a developing story out of Ohio. One person is dead and more than a dozen others wounded after a nightclub shooting in Cincinnati. Our own Andrea Darlis live in the newsroom uh, getting the latest on the situation there. Andrea. And Sean and Courtney witnesses describing the scene as chaotic and horrific. Fifteen people shot early this morning at a nightclub in Cincinnati. One person is dead, 14 others injured. We're told some of those injuries are described as life-threatening. And the manhunt still continues this morning for the gunman. Cincinnati police say shortly after 1.30, a man walked into the Cameo nightclub, or Club Cameo, as many call the popular club, and opened fire. Partygoers say Saturday nights at Cameo are always packed, mainly with a younger crowd. Now, there were reportedly hundreds of people inside of the club at the time until the shooting began. Then patrons ran from, for cover to avoid the bullets, many trying to get out of the building altogether. Now, once the shooting had ended and the gunman ran from the building, witnesses say staff members and others tried to help those who'd been shot by performing CPR and trying to help in any way they could. Police still conducting a massive search for the shooter, and they're trying to figure out what the motive was, why this shooting occurred in the first place. The biggest problem when you have a large crowd like this and the shots ring out, a lot of the witnesses disappear. So people who have left the scene, um, who maybe know something, saw something, just um, get Please contact um, criminal investigation section, uh, crime stoppers, with whatever information that you have that would be greatly appreciated. We need all the help that we can get. Now, while the motive is unclear, we can confirm this morning police don't suspect terrorism at this time. They say their first priority right now is to catch the person who did this. Initial reports indicated there might have been two shooters. Police say there has been trouble and other violent incidents at the club in the past, but nothing like this. Again, one person is dead, 14 others injured in this mass shooting in Cincinnati. We'll keep you updated on developments throughout the morning. Sean and Courtney, back to you.
All right, thank you, Andrea. New overnight, two people are killed, three others are hospitalized in serious condition after a car crashes into a West Town building. It happened at Fulton and Tallman at around 5 this morning. No word on what caused the crash or if anyone in the building was injured. A 14-year-old boy shot and killed near a park in the Austin neighborhood. Laquan Allen was standing on the sidewalk yesterday afternoon when a vehicle drove by and opened fire. He was shot in the rear and taken to Mount Sinai where his condition was stabilized. He died later on. His mother told the Tribune she believes her son was being pressured to join a gang. His family wanted to move out of Chicago to protect him from the streets. And it hurts. It really hurts real bad. So I got nothing else. You wake up and you, you pray to God that you make it to school on time and safe and sound and make it to work and home. Police say they have no suspects uh, and they have no one in custody. A man opened fire in a bus on the Las Vegas Strip, killing one person, wounding another person. Police have not identified the shooter, who's in his 50s. He was armed with a handgun, randomly started shooting on board that bus. It led to a standoff with the man on the bus, the police outside the bus. Police say it was difficult to see the man because the bus was covered in advertising. After nearly four hours, the gunman did surrender. Part of the Vegas Strip and the nearby Cosmopolitan Hotel and Casino had to be evacuated as a precaution. They actually told us after we finished eating breakfast, uh, evacuate. We, we, we were trying to get up to our room. He was on the bus as a rider, and then he, all of a sudden he just started shooting at passengers on the bus. Police say that the man appeared to be delusional and suffered some mental health issues. Authorities started a hotline in search of any bus passengers to report what they witnessed. Well, early yesterday morning, three people dressed in tuxedos and masks robbed a jewelry store inside of the Bellagio Casino. Police say that the robbers smashed the store's glass doors there, grabbing several items, then ran off. You can see one of the suspects in a pig mask right below the Rolex sign there. At least one person is in custody. Police are questioning more people. No shots were fired in the incident, though police say that the robbers were armed. No one was injured. The murder investigation of two teenagers from northern Indiana has entered a new phase. Fewer investigators will be working on the case of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Authorities say they are just as committed to finding their killer as ever, but they are receiving fewer tips now, so it's more manageable. 100 officers were investigating at one point. It's down to about 20 now. The girls were killed almost six weeks ago after going on a hike on a trail near their home. Police are investigating the death of a one-year-old boy on the far south side of Chicago. According to the Sun-Times, the baby lived in the West Pullman neighborhood. He was pronounced dead Thursday morning at Roseland Community Hospital. The Department of Children and Family Services is investigating the boy's mother for possible neglect. Reports say DCFS did have prior contact with this mother in 2014 for possible abuse of an older child. There's a new report out there that shows uh, Chicago police officers are stopping fewer people on the streets, but minorities are still stopped more than anyone else. The stats were released by the police department as part of the agreement with the ACLU. The report found that nearly 71% of stops made in the last half of last year were of African Americans, even though they only make up about a third of Chicago's population. Blackhawks fans, get your wallets ready. Single game tickets for the first two rounds of the playoffs go on sale at noon tomorrow. They're available through Ticketmaster. You can call or go online. Customers are limited to four tickets. The Hawks clinched their ninth straight playoff appearance two weeks ago. All right, still ahead this morning, why lawmakers are demanding a federal investigation after the FBI releases a series of alerts on missing teen girls. And a woman spending thousands of dollars and helping families, all in the memory of her late father. Plus, the Blackhawks suffer their worst loss of the season in Florida. Lauren Majera has all of your sports.